Cringe and Christmas time go hand in hand, as seen in the Christmas movie genre, with Hallmark and streaming services churning them out yearly, like Nick Cannon having kids. Most of these range from cringy cute to so bad it's good. However, this might be one of the worst Christmas movies I've ever seen. So you might be wondering, what sets Christmas coupon apart from the rest? You're saying, Suave, you've seen all of these and never made a video? Why this one? Well, if you won't take my word for it, maybe you'd believe Marie J, or DJ Snuggly Duckling, or the entire city of Washington, D.C. Seriously, my favorite part of this movie was when it was over and I got to peruse through the 76 one-star reviews it had. All of which were more entertaining than this film. You know when people are wishing your movies could match the quality of a Hallmark movie that you fucked up? But my favorite was this one by Rom-Com Connoisseur who said, acting, amateurish. Dialogue, trivial. Plot, weak. Groaner, horrendous. So clearly it's not just me. From the start, we're plopped right into the mess of it like a constipated turd in a porta potty The movie starts at a high school prom with these actors who are clearly in their 30s. Long story short, these two lovebirds were high school sweethearts who Pinky promised that they'd be together forever. And of course, they don't last. Cause he leaves their small town to go play in the NHL while she stayed behind and now teaches ice skating lessons while volunteering at this soup kitchen. And everything is going well, until... Allison Grant, do you know how thin the ice is you're on right now? Excuse me? Her class is at risk of being canceled unless she gets more students. Meanwhile, Ivan here finds himself in a bit of a pickle when he's cut from the team from an injury. And here is when it was revealed to me that you should subscribe, but also that in a movie full of bad actors, this guy truly, unfortunately, stands out. Did we lose all the advertisement deals when I got cut from the team? Yes. He might look kind of like Joaquin Phoenix, but his acting abilities gave more balled up Kleenex. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that. I have a cleaner to do that in the morning. I'm a professional hockey player. I make a lot of money and I hire people to do this. So, side note, this guy was by far the best character in the whole movie. I love how fed up he was with Ivan. Either that or the actor was just fed up with his terrible delivery. So after being an obviously unlikable spoiled jerk, Ivan proceeds to head back to his small town and has a very out of character moment where he's actually nice to this little girl instead of telling her she's beneath them as a human. At the same time, Allison's ice skating classes got canceled. She has to go meet her fiance, who's way too busy with business to have time for her. Listen, I got this huge deal going down today. Can I, can we please talk about this later? And the movie basically proceeds exactly how you'd expect it. These two run into each other and at first they don't get along, but then they start to reconnect. And business guy, I can't remember his name, is jealous that his girlfriend started hanging out with her ex-boyfriend every day. Rightfully so, in my opinion. She didn't even tell him he was an ex. Ivan had to tell him. So of course, then they split up and Allison and Ivan rekindle their romance after 10 years. And life is good. They go on a montage of dates that go on for way too long. And this is where I think either the editor or a director or the writer, or someone made a huge mistake because business guy shows up in a last ditch attempt to win Allison back and he does this by proposing and she accepts which had me confused because she was getting along great with Ivan but then in the next scene Ivan is shown getting offered a coaching job so he goes to talk to her about it but somehow she already knows and it's like you're just gonna leave again you've only ever loved hockey you've never loved me but that happened after she said yes to the proposal so her getting mad makes no sense what I think was supposed to happen is that first Ivan gets offered the coaching job and she somehow finds out and feels betrayed and then business guy comes and proposes because the way it was shown in the movie just makes her seem erratic either that or as soon as she saw the ring she was like damn business is booming so yada 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 ivan's about to leave then he changes his mind and doesn't and allison finds out business guy wants to sell the diner and soup kitchen to people who are gonna tear it down so she gets mad and breaks up with him again and then allison and ivan have the most awkward reconnection And later, the most awkward proposal. Aww. Alice and Grant, will you be my wife? Oh my goodness. Okay. Yes. <laughs> And the movie ends with them one year later, sneaking out from their wedding like they had done 11 years earlier at prom. Oh, and the movie is called Christmas Coupon because when Ivan first came into town, one of the kids gave him a coupon for Allison's skating lessons. And that's how they reconnected in the first place. And by now you can see from all the clips I've shown you that the pacing in this movie is abysmal. Scenes go on for way too long with no cuts or movements from the camera. Like for real, look how awkward all these scenes are. Right over here, but mm -hmm. I'm very happy I got into the business. You guys are so sweet. Well, thank you. 
If we're gonna go on a real date, I wanna go out with the Ivan Hawk. Well, I is what you got, so okay. You got it. <laughs> the stakes are just so low and the friction is so cartoonish. Go see Santa Claus. What is it with this town and Christmas? Oh, come on. Stop being the Grinch. What is it with this town and Christmas? It's Christmas, my guy. It's the biggest holiday of the biggest religion and you're in small town America. This is not Flag Day or Polar Bear Plunge Day. <laughs> How is that real? The climax of the movie is supposed to be when he decides to accept this coaching job, and the music makes it out to be this big moment, but the dialogue and acting do not match. Ivan, are you listening to me? Y yeah, I'm sorry, what'd you say? The team needs a coach. This is serious. Really? But I need an answer now. All right, well, can I at least have a few days to think about it? Okay. Actually, the whole script of the movie is just so, so subversive. I always thought your plot had to make sense. And I'm honestly convinced that the audio people were trying to stage some type of coup. Because randomly, the audio would just become so terrible. Maybe we could have Santa at the Christmas tree farm. Maybe they had to return their mics back to Best Buy before the refund policy ended. So they just started using a tangled headphone mic after that. <laughs> I don't know. I had brainstormed the title, the worst Christmas movie ever. And I thought it was gonna be mostly exaggeration. But then I actually watched the movie. If there was ever a movie made for money laundering, it was this. But I actually also wanna say thank you to the people who made this movie. I know I was very harsh towards it, as I should be, the movie is terrible. But it's that special kind of terrible that it goes past it's so bad it's good to it's so bad it's not good and can't objectively be good but somehow it still is. I died laughing at this movie, at, not with. But I really enjoyed the time I spent with it. So for real, to everyone who worked on this movie, thank you. And if you wanna make my Christmas, hit that subscribe button, please.